my dear. Yeah. You know, I've never realized before that you were so versatile. Welcome back, everyone, to another Pod Sound School tutorial all about getting started with Pro Tools first. On our previous tutorial, we covered customizing our workspace. You can find that tutorial here if you haven't seen it yet. That's where we just got comfortable setting up Pro Tools, setting up the interface to make it most convenient for us in editing our podcasts and our projects. Today, we are going to focus on the modes of operation and the tools inside of Pro Tools we'll need to become most efficient at editing with a special focus on memorizing quick keys. I want to instill good quick key practices with you from the beginning, not lazy practices. We avoid using the mouse as much as possible so we can get lightning fast at Pro Tools. Okay, well, let's get started. I'm gonna go ahead and open up Pro Tools first here. All right, and here we go into our dashboard. I'm going to create a new session and call it Modes and Tools. Now, before we get going, the first thing I wanna do is record some audio. Today I've set up another microphone here going through an audio interface so that I can have this blue microphone still recording for the tutorial and show you how an audio interface and everything works while set up in Pro Tools. So the first thing I wanna show you before we get into the modes and the tools is where you go to configure your audio hardware. You're going to go to Setup right here from the drop-down menu and Hardware. Hardware refers to external equipment that is plugged into our computer, whether it's an audio interface, a webcam. You can see all the equipment that's plugged into my computer right here. We have the built-in microphone, that's the computer microphone, the built-in output, those are the computer speakers, the Yeti stereo microphone. Here's the webcam I'm on, so I could actually record audio into Pro Tools from the audio of the webcam. And finally, we have an Element 46 right here. That is my Apogee Element 46 that I have set up to record in. You'll see a microphone icon here. I got that microphone icon here by clicking on Element 46, coming down to the settings wheel here, and from this drop menu, you can say, use this device for sound input. You're gonna need to do that on whatever device you want Pro Tools to recognize for the sound input. So in this window, it can be different for every person depending on what devices you have plugged into Pro Tools. And it might take a little bit of time messing around in this audio devices window here to get up and running, but it's really not that complicated. I just wanted to show you where that's at. Again, that is from the setup drop-down menu and hardware, that's how you access that. Okay, so do you remember the quick key for setting up an audio track? Shift, Command, N. And on a PC, that's Shift, Control, N. I'm just gonna go ahead and set up a mono audio track here. Here's my mono audio track. Now you remember there's two ways to adjust the height of the track. One is right here from this drop down menu. The other one is by accessing this icon and dragging it this way. We also like to name our tracks right when we open them. I'm gonna double click on the field there and that brings up here where I can name Steve. Now, my input is set to the input one of my audio interface. I'm gonna swing my microphone around here nice and close to my face. And my output is actually set to that audio interface too. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that output to the built-in output for my computer so that you can hear what I record afterwards. And so to avoid feedback, I'll mute it while we record and put this into record. Now you can see my voice levels, nice. Uh, if I were to press Command equals, if you remember that quick key, that is to toggle between my mix and edit window. I can come over here in my mix window and I see nicely this has been turned red because it is record enabled and you can see my levels are really nice. They're not distorting or turning red here. We never want this to turn red or we're gonna hear digital clipping. So that's a nice strong level. We can go back there. And if you remember, the quick key for record is command spacebar. So now we're recording and I will talk for just a moment and I'm going to take some pauses while I'm talking. So here's the first pause. And I'll finish talking up a little bit more and when I'm done talking here on this section, I'll take another pause. And finally, I'll say dandy. Okay, there we go, and I'll go ahead and press space bar to stop the recording. Now I'm going to take it out of record, unmute it, and we can then listen back to so what I recorded. And I will talk, and when I'm done- That sounds pretty good. I have to say I have a delightful voice. 
Now that we have some audio here, we can talk about these modes of operation, and we can also talk about the tools here. I want to talk about the tools first. As we talk about each tool, we're going to also talk about what its quick key is. You can always access the tools by clicking on them with the mouse. But I want you to imagine that I am in the room with you. And if you use the mouse to access these tools, I am going to slap your hand with this ruler. Okay. So let's talk about what these tools are. First, we have the zoom. This will zoom in on our audio. Then we have our bracket. This drags this way. We have our cursor or our selector tool, which allows us to put the cursor anywhere along the timeline. It also allows us to click and drag and highlight areas that way. This is our grabber tool or our hand tool, which can grab whole regions of audio, recorded audio, and drag them back and forth. And this is our pencil. We're not really going to get into the pencil today, but we will talk about what the quick key is for the pencil. So the quick key for the magnifying glass or for the zoomer tool is F5. By pressing F5, you will access that. From F5, it goes to F6 to the bracket. From F6, it goes to F7 for the cursor tool. And from F7, we go F8. Now we skip F9 and the pencil is F10. We're not going to get into the pencil. I want us to memorize F5, F6, F7, and F8. Again, you can always come up here and click on these, but I want you to use those tools. The other thing that you'll see above these three, F6, F7, and F8 tools, is this little bracket that's covering the two of them. And you can see as I hover, it says Smart Tool. If we click on that bracket, all three of these are highlighted together, and they access what is called the Smart Tool. They select it. We're going to talk about that as well. So let's start with the Zoomer tool by pressing F5. This zooms in wherever I press it at. If you want to zoom out, you can hold the Option or the Alt key on a PC and zoom out. Uh, you can also drag the cursor and zoom in on certain areas. This is pretty nifty. And then zoom out as well. While we're here and we're talking about zooming in, I want to tell you about two other quick keys that you have to memorize. Command bracket and command bracket to the right. There's a command left bracket and a command right bracket. By pressing these, you will zoom in and out. These are going to be huge for you. Now we're moving over to F6, which is our trim tool. By pressing F6, we can trim our audio. Now Pro Tools is cool because it does what's called non-destructive editing, which means when we trim our audio, we don't actually lose it. It, it stays there. Uh, Pro Tools will create a new region if we chop our region up, and we will always be able to maintain the original region that we recorded, which is very nice and helpful. Now let's go to F7. F7 is our cursor or our selector tool. This is probably the most used tool. I, uh, I love the selector tool here. We can select. Now remember I mentioned command bracket to the left and command right bracket to zoom in. That's going to zoom in depending on where our cursor is in the timeline. You see as I select here, it's moving from 36 seconds and now to 15 seconds. Well, I want to put it right here in the middle where I took a pause here. And I'm going to press command bracket to the right to zoom in on that spot. Now let's that break I took, I want to erase that break. So I'm going to use the cursor by holding down the mouse and I'm going to select this area and then I press the delete key and that's now deleted. Now if I have the cursor here and I press command bracket to the left, I zoom back out there. That's nice. Let's do the same thing by putting the cursor here, command bracket to the right, zooming in, grabbing that chunk of time with the breath and all that that I don't want in there, pressing delete. Let's go ahead and command bracket left to zoom back out and see now my nice regions there separated from each other. Now I can go over to the F8 tool or the grabber tool and I can grab and move these around simply by clicking on the region. Now, if I just want to highlight two of these regions, I can hold down the shift key after highlighting one. So I'll highlight the first one by clicking on it, hold down the shift key, and now I can highlight two and move them together any way I see fit. I could do the same thing here. Hold, uh, select this one first, then hold down the shift key, and now I can move these around as well. That's wonderful. And then, like I said, F10 or the pencil tool, we're not going to focus on that for now. So now, finally, I want to talk about our smart tool. Our smart tool is really nifty. You can, again, use the mouse if you want to get smacked by a ruler and click up here to access the smart tool. The other way you can get the smart tool is by remembering our quick key for it, which is F6, F7, and F8 
all together at the same time. Watch as I F6, F7, F8, if I press all three of them together at the same time, our smart tool is activated. This is what our smart tool does. It makes all, it makes our bracket, our selector tool, our hand tool all appear at different spots depending on where we put the mouse. It also gives us a crossfade tool and a fade in and fade out tool. This is so nifty, so helpful, and so speedy fast when it comes to editing. So let me show you how it works. I'm gonna command bracket to the right to zoom in here. When I am anywhere in the middle of the region on the top half of the region here, I see my cursor or my selector tool. When I'm on the bottom half, I see the hand tool, which is pretty nifty. That will do this. Come up here, now I can select. Come down here, now I can move it. If I go to the edge, either edge in the middle here of the region, I get my trim tool. So I'm gonna, I don't like this little spike here at the first, I'm gonna trim that out. Uh, maybe I trimmed too much of the silence out here, so I'm gonna drag it out like that with this trim tool. Now that looks really nice, but I don't want clipping at the front and the back of this. I wanna have nice little fade-ins. Well, if I come up here to the top corner, I get the fade-in, fade-out tool. I can simply click and drag, and now I've got a nice fade-in. That looks good to me. Now we go over here, and I wanna cross-fade these three regions together. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We're gonna just use the grabber tool by hovering down here. And then we're gonna use the grabber tool by hovering down here and we're gonna put these together. Then by selecting this with the grabber tool, if I press command bracket, it will zoom in at the beginning of the region selected. And if I come down to the bottom edges or the bottom corners of these two regions here, you will see this nifty cross fade icon. Ooh, that's beautiful and so nifty and so easy. Same thing here, if I select this region, apple bracket to the right, it zooms out. I'm gonna come down here, I get my crossfade icon and do a quick and easy crossfade. Now let's go over to the edge of this one and give it a nice fade out. So I've got a fade in coming, crossfade, crossfade, fade out. And as you can hear, so now we're recording and I will talk. They're nicely crossfaded. The pause. And I'll finish talking up a little bit more. Their pause. And finally, I'll say dandy. That is dandy indeed. That briefly covers our tools. Let's refresh again, F5 zoomer, F6 trim, F7 selector, F8 hand. Don't let me catch you dragging the mouse up here to click these. Memorize those quick keys. It's very, very tempting to drag the mouse up here, but don't do it. F5, F6, F7, F8. It's going to change your Pro Tools life. Now, before we finish up this tutorial and talk about modes, let's take a quick intermission. Okay, I hope you enjoy that intermission. Now let's get into talking about modes. We have shuffle, slip, spot, and grid. The quick keys for this modes are F1 for shuffle, F2 for slip, F3 for spot, F4 for grid. As with the tools, I do not wanna see you using your mouse to access these modes of operation. We use F1 for shuffle, F2 for slip, and F3 for grid. We're not really going to use spot very often. Spot is very complicated, it's very hard to explain, and it's used a lot in video and television. Uh, we're, you're mostly going to be using slip, you'll use shuffle very occasionally, and you might also use grid. Let's first talk about slip. What's the quick key for slip? F2. Now we're into F2. What slip allows us to do is to slip our regions along the timeline with really no restrictions. The restrictions it will slip are within samples. As you can see, I can grab this region here and it just slips wherever I want it to based off of because I'm in slip mode. Now the next mode is grid. Grid is F4. Grid is especially used in music production because it will keep you in the bars and the measures within your music. But grid can also be used when we have this window here set in minutes and seconds. As you can see, this is set in minutes and seconds here. You can change that from this drop down menu and go into bars and beats. Bars and beats is really cool if you're doing music, but we're gonna stay in minutes and seconds for now and then I wanna show you how the grid works. If you notice, this is snapping to a grid that has been created. When I go into grid mode, I'm gonna apple bracket to the right. And as you can see, there are these blue lines here. 
One thing you'll notice about these blue lines is they're happening every second. That is because from right here in our grid, our grid value is set to one second. We can go to 500 milliseconds, which would be half of a second, and we can slide. The one thing that happens here, if we put it back on a second with the grid, is any edits we make will also snap to this grid. So when I press F7 to grab my selector tool here, and I try to select, click and drag, it will click and drag locked onto those seconds. The same thing will happen if I'm in bars and beats, and then I can have my grid time value in bars and beats here set to a bar, which will make the lines bigger, that I can select and delete and move around. It will only snap to the specific grids, or I can set it to 32nd notes or 16th notes. But as I mentioned before, you're mostly gonna stay in slip over here by pressing F2, because you're mostly gonna be making your edits in shorter increments than one second. Now, let's talk about shuffle. I'm gonna use the slip to F8 and Shift grab all of these over here. Then I'm gonna zoom in on my crossfades that I made. I'm gonna select my crossfade with my grabber, press delete to undo the crossfade. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm maneuvering and zooming in here by using the command bracket keys. Now I'm gonna separate these to show you how slip work, how shuffle works. I also like to think of shuffle as a snap editor. Shuffle is F1 to use it, and what it will do is it will snap a region to the next region or the region adjacent to it. If I were to select this, because I'm on my selector tool here with F8, and try to move this to the right, you'll notice that it's very stubborn, and I am clicking and dragging, and it will not move to the right here. That's because there are no regions over here. But if I do the same thing to the left, it snaps. There's no space at all between these. It's snapped to it. So if I also wanted to do that here, I can hold Shift, this is really, really dandy when you are making edits, like the edit I made earlier. So if I go back to slip again by pressing F2, and I kill these two things I have highlighted, now I'm gonna press F6 to drag, get, access my trim tool, and I'm gonna untrim my original audio again on both sides, and I'm gonna create one more edit again by using shuffle and slip together. So I'm in slip mode right now. I'm gonna press F7 to access my cursor, and I'm going to cut out the breath. Now, I'm going to press F1 to access shuffle, F8 to access my grabber, and I'm going to shuffle these together. Now, I'm going to go back into F2 again for slip mode. I'm gonna use app command bracket to the right, and I'm going to press F6, F7, and F8 all together at the same time to get my smart tool and simply crossfade these together. Let me illustrate that again by command Z ing or undoing all of those steps again. I'm gonna zoom out here and, and select that as well. I'm just gonna show you how fast I can do that in real time again. So I'm in slip mode, F7, and I'm moving slower than I would actually move F1 back into the thing, snap these together back into F2, F6, F7, and F8 together to do a nice quick crossfade. And that's actually a little slower than I, than I would move in a standard editing session. These are now edited together. Let's say I wanna make these all into one region. You can consolidate these all into one by going to Edit and Consolidate Clip. Now this shows us the quick key, which is Shift Option 3. So let's go ahead and press Shift Option 3 and boom. Now this is consolidated into one crossfaded beautiful region that I can now move around my timeline. And there you go, podcast people. I know that's a lot of information to digest. Don't worry, go back, watch the video a couple times. Get yourself into Pro Tools first. Make some practice recordings. Use the crossfades. Use the fade tool. Use that smart tool. But whatever you do, do not use that mouse to select the modes or select your tools. If I catch you using them, you're in trouble. We need to get fast. We need to develop good habits right from the beginning. There are a lot of quick keys you need to memorize. We have a nifty PDF that you can print off. You can find the link for it in the description below. Click on that link. We'll email you over a PDF of all of the Pro Tools first quick keys that you need to memorize to get up and going. Thanks so much for tuning in, and next time we'll get even more in depth with Pro Tools First. Happy casting.